Hey, hey, folks. Whoa, this is it. The new studio. Holy hell. We're here. We're queer. It's loaded up for bear. I mean, this is very, this table is bigger than my dad's asshole. Look at this thing. Your dad's asshole is huge. Huge and it he's, tastes he's great. He's got a gaping hole. Yeah, know? oh yeah. Especially after I'm done with him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're starting off hot. We haven't wasted any time in this new studio. <laughs> yeah. Remember anal poppers? What happened to those? Anal poppers. I heard about I feel like I heard about anal poppers every twenty minutes in Jeez. the eighties. The, the worst kids' candy ever. <laughs> yeah, they they pop in your mouth. Remember uh, what was it? Pop rocks. Pop rocks. Yes. The whole thing is you put them in the soda. Mm-hmm. That was the whole thing. Yeah. yeah, and then you feel like you're dying or something. I hated it. Ah, yeah. I was never a pop rocks kid. Me neither. It was it was the heroin of candy. It was too much. Yeah, that if you did that as a kid you're a big uh like uh red bull drinker as an adult yes that's like the type of you're like all right that's true We're coffee guys <laughs> if i see a guy drink a red bull i'm like all right whatever but if i see a guy drink a rock star i immediately lose respect for you really i'm just gonna come out and say it i'm sorry yeah. and if i see you with an amp it's over <laughs> You ever seen Amp drink? No. That, I think that came and went. And then there was this ro- the white can of Rockstar is the whitest trash thing I've what, ever what, seen. What's the, what's the difference between the white and the black? Well, there's a few. But, uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> the black can is bigger. But uh, no, the, the white one, I don't know. It just it's I always see it in like guys' trucks and shit. Yeah. Toothless guys have the white can. Maybe it's a racial thing. I don't yeah. know. But... There it is. Dude, I haven't seen you forever, man. Oh, yeah. It's going to be been back. A minute. We've been, we, we backlogged a few in that old studio because of the move, and, and here we are. Yeah. Salamanca. Hey, hey. Good to back, see you there. Baby. Good to be back. Having, lo- I had a long weekend, so we're doing vodka sodas here. Taking it easy. Taking it easy. Big. I mean, I've been to Europe. You've recorded stuff. Uh, <sighs> we've been on the road. Lots happened, and we got we to gotta shout out to Peters for just killing the studio. Killed the studio, man. Unbelievable. Looks great. Well Love done. The look, we uh, yeah, I've been every. I mean, we were we were in L.A. together. That was pretty epic. Oh yeah, that's right. Jeez, I that, forgot about that. How much time has passed. Yeah, we got uh, overpriced sushi. Yeah, and then uh, not a big fan of this. Is it pronounced omakase? I don't know if you know what that omakase? is. Omakase? I think you... it's omicron. Omicron. <laughs> we got omicron sushi. It was horrible. <laughs> Give me the chills. <laughs> Shit myself. And you guys are burying uh, the lead. Sam well, was on. David Letterman. Yeah. He oh, sat that's down why. With Jeez. David Letterman. Uh, yeah. Of course, I saw it live. I got some pics. Yeah, no, it was awesome. Mark was there, just hanging with me. To it's funny. I see other comics there. They've got like twenty friends. I literally have my agent and Mark. <laughs> Everyone else has like this whole crew. I'm like, this is my crew. I got Norman and, and Berkowitz as my two. But you know, but you know, you, uh, Mark was there, like kick, taking my mind off it of before, putting me at ease, whatever. And then he had to go host a show so i don't realize mark is at the late tape until i get a text and he texts me one of my lines uh-huh. and i was like oh that's pretty cool yeah you okay. know but uh pretty yeah. amazing pretty uh, surreal watching you guys in the same couch talking oh yeah uh, of course alex you got to plug this <laughs> well done sally I mean, Look Pretty at this. Epic. Legend. Did you Legend. ever think you would see this this video in, in history? This is insane. Well, dude, it's funny. You know when you, you know how it goes when you're young, you like dream about being interviewed by Letterman, right? When of you're course. a kid and you dream. I mean, I would it's think about It's game 7. It's, it's game 7. Yes. Yeah, I want I always wanted to and then he's off the air and you're like, "Ah, it'll never happen." You know? That's yeah. just how it is. And then uh he was so freaking cool. Super he, cool. Before the show, he invited every comic who was on this to just one-on-one in his green room and he uh we're just chatting in his green room. I'm just talking to David Letterman, and I'm like, I don't know what vibe. Like, you hear stories, you can be a little prickly, you don't know. He was the warmest guy ever. I literally walk, I walk in, he goes, you know, so I've watched a lot of your stuff. I'm already like, what? Uh, <laughs> wow, that's insane. And then he goes, uh, he goes, you know, the the rooftop thing is so resourceful. Like, so you just kept working. He was, he's fascinated by social media. I mean, obviously he's, why is he such a great interviewer is like a lot of reasons but his curiosity he's so curious so he's like you know uh yeah he was asking me stuff in the room he's like so so i don't understand how you you know you make money off the the social medias and i was like well you tour you make the money on tour and he's like huh because in his day it was all about like the sitcom and and that's how you made the money and you know i think his whole him like being like oh so you can circumvent these gatekeepers now i think he was super in, into that he hates management and yeah. gatekeepers. oh really yeah, yeah yeah i like that but then he but then he uh at one point was like do it whatever this interview is like if you want steamroll me 
Ooh. What, whatever it takes for you to shine. He's like, this is about you. I was like, in my head, I'm like, is he fucking with me? <laughs> Am I going to get out there? And is he going to be like, so, Sam, you're a, a limp dip, uh, limp dick fuck. And I'm just like, what <laughs> the hell is he going to do? No, uh, that would be great if you decided, like, you know what? Fuck this. So what was up with that intern, Dave? You know, <laughs> and he's like, Jesus Christ, what are you doing? No, he was, you know, the first taping, you weren't at the first taping. Mm -mm. My agent nearly lost his fucking mind because I come out and I'm in tight jeans. And my, I guess it was like a, my phone is poking out. And I go out to do my first bit. It hits pretty hard, you know? And they yell out. I hear a voice from up top, Sam. And I'm like, is that God? What the fuck? <laughs> Who the hell's talking to me? Uh, Sam. And everyone's like confused, obviously. I'm like, is someone really fucking up my set right now? Yeah. After my opener hit? Yeah. You're going to make me? She goes, there's a there's a, uh, a bulge in your pants. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, she goes, there's a bulge in your pants. She goes, it's your phone. I was like. All right, so I had to like riff off that. She goes, she says, is something poking out of your pants? I said, yeah, it's my cock, and I got a laugh, thank God. All right. Saving the moment, but she goes, you got to restart the set, and I'm kind of like. That is comedy death. Well, yes. in, my head, in my head, I'm kind of like, just fucking roll with it. What else? I mean, it's already happened. What yeah, can you do? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. get off. Dave is joking around. So Letterman goes, uh, he goes, get the fuck off, like playfully, you know, get oh. the fuck off. Uh. And then he and then he grabs me as I'm going off. He goes, I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. And I said, it's cool. And I go off and I'm like, all right. And I kind of I do my opener again. Exact same joke. I have to. This time it hits even harder because the crowd is fucking mad for me. Oh, so they're great. behind me. They're so rooting like, for you. They're rooting for me. So I was like, all right. Honestly, it might have been good that it happened mm -hmm. in a weird way. But. Damn, that is interesting. Wow, the little behind the scenes stuff. And what a cool, what a mensch to be so nice. He knows what this means, you know. Uh, when I was working with Seinfeld, he's very generous. He's very nice because he knows that you're freaking out, and that's pretty, pretty uh, thoughtful, pretty aware. Yeah, that's nice that he, he's older. But even guys. he is like he doesn't realize how big. Because at one point he was like, I mean, what's next? I'm like, dude, I'm talking to you. Mm -hmm. I'm talking mm -hmm. to David Letterman. <laughs> like this is a big moment, dude. Yeah. You're like I, there was a part of you where you're like, no, nah, this is this is all right. Yeah, that was a great ending you had. You were so quick on your feet. You were in the zone. And uh, he goes, uh, so how you doing? Otherwise, you good? And you're like, how am I doing? I'm on the couch with David fucking Letterman, and yeah. that went. The place went nuts. Yeah, I mean, uh, great way to end it. So I, I know you're an emotional boy. Yeah. Did Maybe? you? Yeah. Did you feel it at all? Uh, yeah. I mean, I was. You know what the thing was? That was a tough weekend for me because I was literally, you know, I taped two shows of that last night, that night on a Friday, and then the next day is when I did the Beacon. So I literally, I'm, I had to wake up at like 5 a.m. earlier. I think it was 4 a.m. What a week to get back to New York to do the Beacon Theater that night. So I'm, I, the second I'm out of there, I'm like. Fuck it, muscle relaxer. I think I took it backstage. Whoa. Like, Let's let the muscle relaxer hit so I can get at least two hours. Yeah. And uh, I've I walked to... Sam home. He was living. <laughs> and then I get to the airport. I see Chris DiStefano. Hey. And Chris and I, and Chris is like, you could do it, man. Just try to get like at least two more hours of sleep on the yeah. flight. He's like, he's like amping me up to sleep. And, Hell yeah. Uh, and then I pass out. I get up and he, I just, as I wake up, I just see Chris like, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. That's so funny. The idea of you taking a muscle relaxer, you're out, you pass on the plane. Sam's not waking up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Cancel the bacon. <laughs> oh man. Um, but very excited. I mean, that's a milestone. Oh, it was epic. It was so cool that Mark was there with me too. It's it's a good feeling, man. I was Fuck. with you the next night. At you the with me the next night. And yeah, the beacon. How, can we hear about the beacon? Or I mean, is yeah, that? The I mean, I gotta hear is about it. Insane, man. It was, it's New York City. It's I mean, you perform there. It's crazy. It's uh, yeah. It's uh, how many times we walked under that marquee going to stand up New York or, or whatever, like, oh, Steely Dan, oh, yeah. Carlin, oh, uh, Fish or whoever, you know, it's always some huge thing or Paul Simon. Yeah. And then no, it's Sam Murill. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, one of the best. I mean, it's like how, you almost can't picture a better room, right? It's mm -hmm. like, it's yeah. Epic. So uh, especially for a New Yorker like you, like you grew up. Ten blocks from there, maybe. Uh, yeah, I grew up close to there, so it's wow. pretty. It's pretty damn crazy. Yeah. Uh, not ten blocks, but I mean, it would. It would. That's a. Yeah, it's the Upper West Side. It's it's iconic. It's. I mean, I'd only been to one show there. I saw the Greg Giraldo uh, benefit there, which was like Jesus Christ. Talk about like murderous fucking row. It was oh like, yeah. It was like a tell. Colin Quinn, uh, Seinfeld. Wow. It was black. I mean, just everyone was a murderer. Mm. Uh, crazy you know it's, i mean the beacon is as good as it gets man it's the best so cool and isn't it weird and th this is this is where i get mushy about comedy but 
Something about comedy and success and doing well, it all happens in spurts. Have you noticed that? Like, you did Letterman at the Netflix Fest, then the Beacon 20 hours later, and then a special... I'm like, yeah, can we pace this slightly? Exactly. Yeah, it hits you in a point where you're like, Jesus Christ, let me take a fucking breath. It always seems to happen. I did a uh, Last Comic Standing, failed. Then I went and did my half hour. Got had some uh, virus from eating ass, and then I went and did my album. You the were next puffy day. in the half hour. Oh, was I pu- pull that up? Pull there, that up, Peters. I, I look like Which you. Which one is it? <laughs> I was just so bloated. I had all Your these. I had Netflix? this. No, no, no. It's comedy Central half hour. I'm so bloaty and fat. I look like I've been floating in a river for three days. It was crazy. You got you got that from eating butt? Yeah, it's a fecal matter thing. Damn. If you ingest fecal matter. It's called H. pylori. Better, and... to, better to eat ass off stage than on. <laughs> That's you true. Caught, uh, caught by the more line. you know. The more you know. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, let's see. Can you we can just put that? up a still. Yeah, is there a still? Yeah, sure. Because I, uh, I am a mess, but I had to push through. You know, Comedy Central back then. They're oh, look at these fucking queefs. They don't. They don't give you an inch. Hard to believe they're fucking failing. Uh, oh yeah, that does not look like you. I'm, Mark. I'm deep, and this is me with a ton of makeup on. I'm, oh I'm like, uh, I'm like a different guy. I'd You'd be shit. a terrible drag queen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jesus, um, look at that. I remember I didn't know what I had, so I thought I had AIDS because wow, I just didn't know. I was shitting water. My tongue was sheet white. I was uh, just sad and anxious and dehydrated. Went to the doctor. He goes, I don't know what this is. Let's run some blood tests. I don't know what this is. This is not what you want to hear. I know. Two weeks later, he goes, uh, are you sitting down? He called me. And I'm like, oh, God. He goes, you have H? And I was like, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, H. pylori. It's one pill. It's an antibiotic. You're good to go. I was like, yeah. oh, all right. There we Jesus go. Jesus Christ. Can we get a different name for it? I know. The H. Yeah, the H. Mm. Also, Damn. sitting down. I mean, it's so, such a ber- terrible way to give someone news. Yeah, yeah. Are you sitting down? Why yeah. do we do that? Yeah. <laughs> Tell that to we... Stephen Hawking. Right. <laughs> Are you sitting down? You know I am. <laughs> exactly. I don't really have an option here. <laughs> You're sitting down? Yeah. You're paralyzed. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, dude. Yeah, no, the amount of shit, I mean, uh, that happens at once in this biz is... is in the... So you you were in Europe, though, man. You were in London. Yes. I got to hear about London. I, I've never done comedy in London. Really? No. It's great. Well, we London's did awesome. Ireland together, but I've never done... London, London. Uh, yeah, I remember the Ireland was fun too. But London, it's it feels more New Yorky. It feels there's less tension there. Don't you feel like in America, it's like rich versus poor, black versus white, men versus women. There's all these movements and everybody's coming and fighting and cancel and all this shit. It didn't feel like that there. You H. Just Pylori like, versus comedian. I mean, it never yeah, stops. yeah, ass eating. <laughs> but it just felt like fun and light, and yeah. it felt like the '90s again. It was weird. Um, and we did mean lists and. Uh, Luke Monez and Ismael Lutfi, oh, all these guys. guys. Yeah, yeah, Broussard, Dude, all these guys. have you seen Luke Monez's characters? Oh, he is hilarious. Dude, pull up, like, the guy who runs it. Like, it's like uh, Luke Monez runs into, uh, oh, God, running into, like, your girlfriend's friend or something or, like, anything like that. It, it just, or it's fucking... Kendall's from Succession Impressions are insane. Too. Oh, yeah. He's a, Monez, M-O-N-E-Z. Yeah, yeah. No, I S. Think S, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a funny guy. Dude, he's so funny. Underrated. He just moved to L.A., too. Oh, uh, did he? So he, he'll probably get in a movie or something and blow up. But yeah, great guy, too. Great hang in London. Oh, you know? yeah, this is a good one. So you're uh, Casey's boyfriend? Let's see. You see the Joker? Keith or Joaquin? Three, two, one. Jared Leto. <laughs> nice. I'm a Leto guy. Sushi. Do you like it? Ah. <laughs> uh, Car horns, right? You can drive. You see that? Used to be a building there. You like board games? <laughs> I had this idea for Trivial Pursuit, but kind of porn. So they're close friends. I guess that makes us uh, friends in law. How about a hug? You got a calculator <laughs> on you? How much did a guy like you pull down a year? Ballpark it for me. Where'd you go to school? I went to Hogwarts. Just kidding. Just a big fan of the Harry Potter books. I actually did University of Phoenix, not online, but at the time I was told that it was a real school. Take your time, we're good. I'm getting to know, uh, Chris, what's your favorite kind of weather? What do you think that is, huh? 2.6 2.6 million views. Like and this is like the, what, 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 pull up the caption for what this TV is. Guys. Like, go, scroll up, so. You, when you. your girlfriend She's runs great. into her friend and you're stuck with the other boyfriend. Oh, that's great. Great premise. Yeah, I'm actually on an adult mock trial team, so. 
Would it surprise you to learn that I am 61 years old? I think it would be nice <laughs> so to random. Hear. Yeah, he's funny too. He's Stand good. up is great. Uh, cool guy. We hung out. Everybody would get breakfast in the morning. Yeah. So I got to break down London. Break it down, dude. We were out there doing a game show. And they pay you well. They fly you out first class. They put you up in this insane hotel. People have top hats and shit. And they press your coats. You know, it's one of these places. And you whispering to your, your uh, fiance, that's the fucking Monopoly guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it was like a little Downton Abbey type shit. But just high end, high end. And me and List are like, this is insane. Look how nice they're treating us. Wow, the money's good. You were on the show with List. Yeah, he was there uh, like a few days before me. So he did an episode. Then I flew in and I was like, hey, how are we're here. Oh, my God. L uh, London. Here we go. And then he's like, have you done any work yet for the show? I was like, I haven't even opened the packet. And he's like, you're fucked. What's was, the premise for the show? It's kind of like a, at midnight. It's okay. these British panel shows are huge there. Like they're they mock the week. Another one. The guy who made this did last. Oh, not last. Uh, what's that one called? Whose line is it anyway? Oh, wow. so he's like a big swinging producer dick. And this was a big show, 300 people in the audience, huge set, Dulce Sloan hosted it, Chanel Ali, we're all hanging out, but it was a big production, and I was just like, ah, we're funny guys, we'll go in, we'll zing and zang, we got our ass kicked. These British guys are on the show. They're so quick. This is their, this is their whole life. So it's America versus... Versus yeah. England. Do you feel patriotic? A little. Yeah. But we sucked. So I was like, <laughs> maybe I'll move here, you know? Long live the Queen. Um, is the show good? Well, I don't want to trash the show, but it, I felt like the funniest parts about you, they took away. I hate that. Isn't that bad? Yeah. Yeah, like, it was a lot of puns. Like, they go, what's a meat and a book? And you go, Harry Pot Roast. <laughs> no. <laughs> and you're like, what am I doing? I got an act. I'm selling tickets now. What the fuck am I doing here? But, you know, you just got to remember I also don't think, London. I'm never, like, I'm not a big pun guy. Like, look, there's a place for me. But, sure. But... They're easier than jokes. Yeah, and it's not. It doesn't elicit a lot of laughter. You kind of go ah. So they're more just like applauding that you that you're clever. Is yes, that the, yes, right. it's very clever. And look, they, people said some funny jokes. These British guys were amazing. They were quick as shit. But they live for this. This is like the the way we write jokes. They write panel jokes, and I stayed up all night one night because it was so embarrassing how bad I bombed because how much I wasn't prepared. So I stayed up all night the next night. I brought I brought my gal out to London. She was like, what are we doing today? I'm like, I'm writing. I'm in the hotel writing. I'm in the business center writing. It's brutal. So I got my ass kicked on this show. So that'll Is, come out there soon. yet? No, it's on the CW, I think. But in, you're not happy with it. No, but I mean, it's it's a pun show. So it's not the end of the world. Yeah. But Damn. Ooh, it was rough. Damn. And I guess it's on me because I was like, oh, I'll just go out to London. I did some sets at night and get drunk. I was drinking at five at the pubs all day. But man, that show kicked my ass. What Were they COVID testing you the whole time? The there? whole thing with the Fuck. COVID test. That, see, internationally, that would stress me out so much because even if you get like a false positive, now I'm just like stuck in fucking London. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they hit you every day, multiple times a day. Wardrobe. You know, got to get your packet printed. Send in your packet. It, I mean, it was a lot of work. And I had no idea. But London was awesome. Did sets at night. The crowds there are white hot. Joe List listed the comedy store. We went and watched him. I mean, we had a blast. What are you pulling up, Sally? Oh, it was my impression of Mark in London. Let's see. Did you tell him the packets are yeah, store? Yeah, the packets are <laughs> I tried everything. I was Dude. pulling out old tweets, old jokes, everything, just oh. to try to get a laugh. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. But... Still a trip to London. I brought the lady. I bought her ticket, but I was in first class. She was in the last and final row of an international flight up on the bathroom wall. Wow. Ooh. And I was like, oh, I felt so bad. But I, I went back and gave her my pillow. I'd get I'd get first class food. I'd walk it back to her just out of guilt. That's hilarious. Yeah. I felt like I was up in the, the Hamptons and she was like in, in uh, you know, bed -sty. It's like in Weekend at Bernie's are just chilling on the roof. Remember that? <laughs> oh, yeah. The hot summer roof. Oh. <laughs> Brutal. But uh, we had a blast. And the pub culture there is so cool. I love an old pub. Oh, it's the best. Five o'clock, they're all filled out with people who got off work. They're drinking. They're socializing. I feel like they look at their phones less there. They talk more there. They interact more. Yeah. Just felt happier there. What I was, was in Germany. Oh, here he goes. Oh, sorry. I was, in, <laughs> I was in Germany, in Berlin, and I like walked into this bar, pu total pub scene, and I was like uh, to the bartender, I was like, can I get the Wi-Fi? He's like, 
Come enjoy your life. Go sit outside. Oh, he didn't wow. give it to me. Where was this? In Berlin. Wow, you yeah. see? Yes. They're better than us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go enjoy your life. Maybe it's for like a work thing. You don't fucking know. He was saying, if you're here, you're obviously on vacation. What are you doing Ooh. on your fucking phone? Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> he's I got think... a point, but he... he he's he got a point, but guess what? It. Like, tell me the fucking Wi-Fi. Yeah. Yeah, well, guess who doesn't like Germany? <laughs> <laughs> Still haven't forgiven them. The Wi-Fi offense, slightly less. Yeah, uh, yeah, almost as bad. Problematic, but yeah. <laughs> First they killed six million Jews. Now they won't fucking give up the Wi-Fi code. Uh, <laughs> it never ends with these fucking people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what was the bar called? Goebbels? Oh. Uh, <laughs> He's still in British talk show, for, uh, Mark. Yeah, I know. But, uh, right? <laughs> But what bars are here, like but a Goebbels up is that? What's that? Oh, sorry, I stepped sorry. in a Goebbels. I was Goebbels doing a pun. Go ahead, hit us. I said Richard Gere put a Goebbels up his ass. There we go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tweet it. I'll sell that to a British comic. <laughs> but the what? shows there all, and we're we're like hot shit in London. I was going to comedy clubs, uh, like, hey, I'm Mark Norman. They're like, oh, what, Mark Norman? Get, you want to go on? All that shit. So that really? was nice. Yeah, yeah. So you could clean up. All right. Hey, man. Just taped the special in Chicago. Ooh. Pretty happy. Oh, with it. let's hear about it. You did something a little different than seven normal. shows. We did seven, seven shows. Sh eight, well, seven shows. Yeah, I know. I'm a fucking idiot. I couldn't help myself. I, well, you get good moments, man. But I'll tell you the problem with taping seven shows is like, there's a new person that comes to hang out at the show every night ah. of the the four nights of taping. Yeah, you getting drunk every night. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I I live, I'm at the den in Chicago. I go in there, you know. 20 bottles of natural wine in my green room. Holy I've got whiskey shit. in there. I'm like, let's just, yeah, there's there's no wine left by the end of the week. We're fucking pounding this shit. Gee, who 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 stocked the green room? Uh Hitchens? <laughs> Holy shit. By That's way, a lot of booze. Quick interjection. I was at the Comedy Connection in Providence. Yeah. And you signed the wall. Yeah. It says Great Club Bad Wine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they brought me some wine back there, and with some horse. I'm like, I'm not drinking this shit. I'm no snob, but this is gonna kill me the next day. Yeah. Nah. I, I, you gotta be careful with the wine with the hangovers. True, true. So you have natural wine there, stocked. Natural wine. The hangover's not as bad. I'm in a hotel with Vita. We got a good rate in this hotel. There's a sauna in the hotel, so every day we wake up, we fucking sweat out the booze. Hell yeah. Nice little, nice little routine. Yeah, it works too, man. Fit. That that sauna shit works. That sauna shit is nice. It really is. I've there's like a lot of health benefits to sauna. If I ever hit it big, I do the sauna in the the house. Really? Yeah. Over steam? I mean, like, if I hit it, you know, fucking crazy. You go sauna over steam? I'm a steam guy. I, think. I don't know what the difference is. Steam is wet heat. Sauna is dry heat. Ah. I think that's the difference, yeah, right? The sauna smells like got wood and stuff inside and uh, rocks. Is that the sauna? No. Dry heat's what I called I my ex. Okay. But um, yeah, <laughs> steam, maybe. It's all smoky and steamy. Yeah. Maybe I do like sauna. No, maybe I like steam. Steam is better, I think. I, like I don't steam. think you have to stay in a steam as long either. You kind of just get the. Mm -hmm. I don't okay, know. full steam ahead. Good to know. <laughs> but I would do it. I would do it. If I was a millionaire, I'd go. Steam room in the house. I think it, you're doing you're close, buddy. Wow, I think uh, that's a big operation. You got to break walls down and pipes and plumbing. I don't know. It's feels, gonna happen, buddy. Feels like a heavy duty operation. But you get like you know the size of maybe two phone booths just sitting that thing. Love it. That's all you need. That's yeah. all you need. Yeah. Oh, By the way, so last phone booth was taken out of Manhattan last week. Really? Yeah, it was like a big deal. Damn. No more phone booths. Not one. First they come for the phone booths, then they're coming for the yellow cabs. Yes. It's already begun. That's right. These motherfuckers. And these the Uber Wi -Fi. fucks. It's not progress. Yellow cabs are good. Bring bring back the cabs. We need it. We all hate it. I mean, I've done it on this pod too many times. I've complained about it too much. But man, it's like it's depressing as hell to watch these old movies and yellow cabs are everywhere and it's like it's gonna look like a horse and carriage soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, sure. it's terrible. I wanna get back to your Chicago though. So, oh yeah, sorry, sorry. Seven shows. When did you know you had it? Third show. Oh wow! I I mean we uh, we got there Wednesday and I'll say this Wednesday was probably the worst crowd, which mm. is some, but I also was probably the worst I was all week because you're just trying to nail the first tape. You're like, let me just get the jokes, so then you're not really yourself. And then yes. once you have it, like then the second show, man, we pretty much got it on the Thursday early show. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I got the jokes to hit. And then the late show, I'm loose because I felt confident, and that's when I'm like, oh no, we really got the jokes to hit. You know, mm -hmm. so then you start riffing, you start fucking around, I start doing crowd work. I started kind of 
making you know going off the cuff a little having fun and then when you're loose you're like oh that's you that's so that was once you hit the third one then you're like all right now i can really wednesday i might have had like a couple drinks and then like thursday i'm like i'm drinking nice you think you're gonna cut together seven or are you gonna be like no, this just, is the main one and we're gonna use pieces from there might be like a moment in each show that's funny but like yeah because you kind of try to differentiate it a little bit just to stay engaged because you know you know the feeling where you just get bored with the act oh yeah you get really bored with the jokes you've been telling them on tour for so long that you're just kind of like i just want to just want to fuck around dude yeah this must have cost you a fortune how are you going to recoup uh, we'll see. I mean, seven shows. I know that costs a lot of money. Well, you Calm gotta, down. You got to think he's making money doing <laughs> no, the shows. I, yeah, no, I made, oh, I made money shooting tickets, and, and we'll never know where the special end up. So it's uh, Ooh. Tease. Mystery. Uh, Stay tuned. Very exciting. Uh, but yeah, no, everything's... Uh, don't you feel good? Because we've all recorded a show where you're like, I don't know how that was. And then, you, you know, Comedy Central or some weirdo group is editing it. So you're like, I hope they edit that right. Yeah. But this is all you. You're good. You feel good about it. I you're... feel pretty good. Yeah, I think it'll I think it'll be good. It's, yeah. but then you then you have the problem where you're like, why don't I I gotta write a new act? Well, that's a whole another bag it's of hands. It's fucking hard. Yeah. Hard to keep writing new new jokes. It keeps you humble though, because you, you notice that comics that keep burning shit, you you can't like yourself too much because you're not going up and killing as much as yeah. these people that keep kind of playing the hits. So you got that right. You go up there and you start you get humble pretty easily. Yeah, this I'm, is why these old timers just do the same act for you know twenty years. Because if they try a new thing and it bombs, now people are like, "I thought you were a legend." So it's hard. It's a hard process. It's yeah. a tightrope. Yeah. To work that new shit out. Yeah. Any any Rex? Well, wait. I gotta ask. Hold yeah. on. Before you, if this comes out in what August September? Yeah. So you still got. A uh, hot two, three months to. I, I hope at least two months. To yeah. couch the new shit with some of the old stuff on the road. Yeah. Are you so taking a break build. at all? You take a... t- I'm taking a few days off. What are you in, gonna do? in July, I'm gonna go to a resort and just chill oh. out and wow. just. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> a resort. That's nice. <laughs> no, good for you. Just... <laughs> what? You don't hear about a resort. You go in a resort. Very well, I don't often. do it much, but I've I've been told by a lot of people that you never take a break. You need to do something where you recharge. So I'm going to give it a shot. And my friend, uh, my buddy Chase, is going to come join me the last couple nights. We're just going to do it up. We'll do fucking. We'll, well, you know, probably drink. We'll try to have some fun. So. All right. Well, this is a weird way to come out of the closet. Oh. Uh, you going up to a resort with this guy Chase, who I've never heard yeah. of. I was sick of the Chase. <laughs> Thought I'd bring my own. No. All yeah. Right. I can't uh, no. you're revor- resorting to homophobe. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Save that for the British shows. Yeah, yeah it's really. <laughs> so, it's up my ass. I can't shake it. Wow. Uh, yeah, no, man. Any any recommendations? Uh, well, let's see. I got I got more peeves than Rex. They hit me but... with a fucking peeve. Right, I'll hit you brother. with a peeve. It's been a while. Okay. Oh, I did have a wreck. I, oh, I did see Top Gun, but we'll talk about that. Uh, Ooh, is it good? Well, I'll just say I'll I'll recommend it. It's it's got a lot of cheese on it, you know. Sure. Like he gets uh, he has a problem with one of the other cadets, and the other cadets like a good looking, over the top, cocky guy, and then the the guy with glasses is the nerd and the dweeb, and everybody. It's just so uh, car- uh, cartoony. Yeah, everything's very tropey. A lot of tropes. Yeah, I'll just say that a lot of tropes. But too fun bad I, I had high tropes for this one. <laughs> yeah, England. 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 Um, we need to play that British music Oops, sorry. when the Queen walks out every time we do a pun. <laughs> yeah, can we get that sound effect? You know the, the, the changing of the guards or whatever <laughs> they call it? The, <laughs> no, that's uh, the Buckingham that's Palace it. shit. All right, that joke princess died. All right. <laughs> We're back. What? Uh, yeah. But yeah, Top Gun is fun. Yeah. I saw it with my lady. She was just like, this is so cheesy. But by the end of it, we were both fist pumping. Yeah. You know, I had like a little American flag uh, pin, and uh, it was a good time. I mean, say what you want, but like Tom Cruise is kind of like the last oh, of yeah. the movie star type guy. You know, and obviously totally. there's others, but he really is like an old school what the oh that's queen no i need the british shit jesus christ what the hell are you doing (laughs) you should just just bankrupt the fucking new studio what the hell are you doing (laughs) sam's gonna be playing that at the resort (laughs) Uh, (laughs) what uh yeah i I got it aids h pylori (laughs) got h pylori we uh 
Yeah, yeah. So go see Top Gun. It's fine. I got a, I got a movie wreck for you. Okay. And I think Salacuse will, will back me up on this. Hustle on Netflix. Oh, Sandler's new movie. I'm excited. Yeah. Tailor made for someone like me. Yes. Really. It was. It's just like a total movie, like a basketball. It's like it's like it, my friend described it as like NBA 2K My Player Mode. If if that were a movie, ah, oh, where you're like good. rising the ranks. It's awesome. Sandler fucking kills, kills it. it. Really kills it. He can act, man. Once I saw Punch Drunk Love, I was like, this guy. As a solid actor. Yeah. Oh, it's it's so good. The guy who plays the the star, uh, Juancho Hernan Gomez, that? he's he's in the league. He's like you know he had like one good NBA season. His brother played for the Knicks actually, Willie Hernan Gomez, wow. and I loved Willie. He was a brick wall, but uh, you know they're, the they're just, both from Spain. Here's the trailer. I sort of describe it as Jerry Maguire meets a great Armor All commercial ah. or, or Under Armour commercial. All right. All right. Oh, Philly, huh? Because if you don't, let's not even bother. Let's not open that door. They're just going to slam it right in our face. Look, I be riding through my own hood. Wow, producers, LeBron James. I love this game. I live this game. And, dude, that's Kenny Smith. A lot of players are actors in it. Anthony Edwards, he's a great young player. He's funny as hell in the movie. He's really good. He's a great young player. Obsession's going to be talent every time. Wow. Is this why Sandler's been balling a lot? He's always been a baller. Oh, okay. He can play. Let's face it, it's you against Queen Latifah is a love interest. Oh, she's great. Great. Always great. Lesbian. You have to think I am the best guy out there. But also, you're watching this. I'm like, dude, if Sandler was motivating me, I could, I could become pretty good at hoops. Yeah, yeah, totally. He just, you buy him as a motivator. Right. Yeah, dude, it, it's. It's an awesome movie. It's yeah. just a it's just a really fun it's a really good sports movie. Yeah. All right. I love a good sports movie. I, I dug it. I was watching it on the road. I was like, oh, this is this is putting me in a good place. I'm down. I will yeah. watch it. Would the lady like it or would she hate yeah, it? Yeah, it's okay. great. I told my agent to watch it and she uh she and her boyfriend are like that she's texting me, she's like, This is amazing. I was like, oh, Yeah, great. it's awesome. Mm-hmm. And it's like Sandler just fucking he rules, man. Good for Sandler, man. I mean you know, SNL, great comic to SNL to household name to then putting out some uh, Jack and Jills and Clicks and whatnot. But, but when you, I thought Click was was pretty solid. Actually. They all uh, make the money. One. They all do well. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Audience. That's true. He had I mean, a, one on Netflix that was pretty wild. Well, dude, you know, when you make like thirty movies, yeah, you're not going to hit a home run on every one of them. He had an epic run. You know, epic I mean, run, but he's still running. Is what I'm saying. Like he's yeah. just reinventing uncut gems. This it's great stand-up special was fun. The late was one, good. later one, I liked it. Yeah, so good for him. Yeah, stay with it. Keep going. <laughs> stay. You're telling Adam Sandler to stay <laughs> with <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. Condescending <laughs> fuck. No, I'm just. This saying, is what happens I'm when you go to England. You go no. <laughs> <laughs> stay with it, mate. Uh, oh boy, they're passive aggressive ninjas in England. Oh my it's god. Amazing. Well, I asked one guy, I was like, excuse me, sir, which way is Oxford Street? He's like, you got a smartphone, do you? I'm like, oh, jeez. <laughs> Thanks, Nigel. <laughs> that guy just zinged me. I didn't even realize it until 20 minutes later. I got a peeve for you. And this one, you know, this is a good peeve because it comes back to me, as these often do, where I get annoyed and then it kind of turns into my fault. The, you ever have the train coming and then the guy in front of you just takes their sweet fucking time. They block you off for the turnstile so you can't get through. Oh, yeah. This prick is like, he's like, mm, let me take, I'm like, that's the train. Fucking move, dude. Oh, yeah. So I'm getting annoyed. So I just zing right in front of him. I cut him off. I, yes. I do the old flippity flop. And then and then my, uh, I'm doing the, you know, yeah, you know what's coming. The tap. Yeah, the tap. It won't read it. Oh. Ah. So now I, now you're him. Ah. But you, And now I'm him. Yeah, <laughs> you turned me into you, but your <laughs> shittiness made me shitty. I caught shittiness from Interesting. you. Interesting. Hurt people, hurt people. Yeah. Wow. But at least you're trying. At least I'm trying. This guy's like fiddling with shit. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if the train is coming, I mean, you gotta hustle. That's just. Uh, yeah. That's just the rule. Oh, I've, I, you have the friend too. I've had friends who are like, you know, I one time I made it through at, at late night. He made it through. My friend yells out, "Go on without me!" Because he couldn't get through. That's a real friend. That's a friend. Yeah. Go on a, without me. I would never. Foxhole with that I would guy. never. Yeah. Tell the world my story. <laughs> well, that's when you hold the door. That's yeah. what you do in that. And then everyone oh, hates yeah. you for a different reason. Yeah, but you can deal with them hating you. This is a friend here. But yeah. yeah, I'm with you. I would have jumped it at that point. I mean, come on. If the trains that you cannot miss the train. I've had girls on dates where they're like, "Ooh, 
oh, a tampon, oh, a Luna bar, oh, a, a Nuva ring. And I'm like, what are you doing? The train's here. Get that purse going. This is Mark's chance to ditch them. He just hops over like, later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was like, don't wait for me. I was like, you got it. <laughs> hey, hey, folks, we might be drunk is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Many people are burned out. And they don't even know it. Symptoms can include lack of motivation, feeling helpless, trapped, detachment, fatigue, or more. We like therapy. We go to the same guy. Changes yeah. our lives. You got to do it. The bags are piling up. You got to take out the mental and emotional garbage, folks. And this is an easy way to do it. We associate burnout with work, but that's not the only cause, Dad. Most things in life can lead us... Dada. <laughs> ...burned out, and BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to prioritize yourself. Talking with someone can help you figure out what's causing stress in your life. We love it. I was a mess. Still am a mess, but at least now I know it. Yeah, therapy's good, man. Huge. Get Game that changer. help. Yeah, why not? It's good for you, and if you'll feel better. So Maybe you might it's well your mother. It. Probably is. Most likely your parents. That's the 80% chance. Maybe your priest. Better help is customized. Or rabbi. Or rabbi. Or what's the other one? What's the Muslim guy? Ah, uh, BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's more affordable than in person, and you can be matched with a therapist in under forty-eight hours. Holy hell! You drunks out there get ten percent off their first month at BetterHelp.com. Slash drunk. That's B E T T E R H E L P dot com slash drunk. Get on it. We, <laughs> we might, might be, be drunk is brought to you by Manscaped. Thanks to Manscaped, everything goes down the drain, including oh, yeah. my career. <laughs> Try their new platinum package. It's like their greatest hits collection. The Lawnmower 4.0 has a special blade so you don't cut yourself and has spotlight to shave in the dark. Plus, it's waterproof. The Weed Whacker nose and ear hair trimmer keeps your holes safe while you clean up. Got to keep those holes safe, folks. While their Crop Preserver and Crop Reviver keep you fresh south of the equator. The Ultra Premium Collection with Body Wash, 2-in-1 Shampoo and Conditioner, and Deodorant help you smell good from head to toe. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code DRUNK at manscaped.com. That's 20% off free shipping with the code DRUNK at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you, and so will your lady or man. Yes. Hey, hey, with all the jargon flying around, it can be hard to figure out how to start investing. Get your money right. Getting your money right is easier with SoFi, the first investing platform to offer stocks, ETFs, automated investing, cryptocurrency, all in one app. We don't know what the hell we're doing. The dollar's worthless. Inflation's going up. I don't know if it's Putin, if it's Biden, if it's Cardi B, Lizzo. I can't keep up. Whether you're eager to get started with investing or you're ready to find out the ropes, SoFi has your back. No commissions on trading stocks, ETFs, and no account fees or hidden fees. Use fractional shares that start as low as $5 to buy brand name stocks. Hey, that's good. SoFi's complimentary financial planners are ready to help with any questions, whether you're stuck on where to start or help deciding what to do next. Save for your retirement with traditional Roth and SEP IRAs. Set your own investment goals. From saving for retirement to building up a down payment. So true. This stuff is complicated. I'm slow. I'm simple. I don't know what I'm doing. I'd like to get involved. So this is tailor-made for me. Cut huge, through the jargon. Huge. Yes. Are you investing? Eh, a little, yeah. Yeah, we can I got a guy who does it for me. I don't know what I'm doing. Same, same. I don't have time to learn this stuff. We're, we're comedians. And that's what SoFi is for. Cut through the jargon and make investing easier with SoFi. Visit SoFi.com slash drunk to learn how you can win up to $1,000 in stock when you open an account. Wow, that's S-O-F-I dot com slash drunk. Brokerage and active investing products offered through SoFi Securities LLC member Finra Sipike. F I N R A S I P C. Clueless. You know us, and we look at plenty of shit online we don't want other people to know about. 
and we'll let you guess what that is. Most of you are probably thinking, why don't you just use incognito mode? Incognito mode doesn't hide your activity, and cleaning your browser history doesn't erase it. Your internet service provider can still see every single website you visited. Uh-oh. That's why even when I'm at home, I never go online without using my ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers so your ISP can't see the sites you visit. I mean, I'm doing this the second I get home. Oh, yeah. Most of the time, I don't even realize how I have ExpressVPN on. It runs seamlessly in the background and is easy to use. All you have to do is tap one button and you're protected. ExpressVPN works across all your devices, phones, computers, even your smart TV. So there's no excuse not to use it. I love how easy ExpressVPN is to use on my phone. Protect your online activity today with a VPN rated number one by Business Insider. Visit our exclusive link, expressvpn.com slash drunk, and you can get an extra three months free Woo. on a one-year package. That's expressvpn.com slash drunk. Expressvpn.com slash drunk to learn more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't wait for me. When uh, I first started dating Stacy, uh -oh. uh, she's not from New York and I am. And you know how you walk on the train, you kind of like, stay there until someone pushes you a little bit so i led and i was expecting her to push you know to push me in and she didn't and the doors closed and she was on the outside and i was on the inside Whoa. and i turned around and she's like this oh i know she should have just left me then like yes this train leaves never sees me again did you have phones at the time no no this is like 2005 wow. oh yeah, yeah. You just lost her yeah i was like i'll see you damn <laughs> whoa man that's when you had to communicate like meet you at the next stop or something like that next mm -hmm. stop. damn that's old school wow would you get in a phone booth after that <laughs> and the collect caller yeah by the way, I went to a phone booth, like, I don't know, 2009, I saw one, and I was like, oh, phone booth, and I got in, it just smelled like piss and miscarriage, I was like, all right, fuck it, I'm good. <laughs> it was like this nostalgic, cool moment that it just was ruined by some hobo I piss. definitely pissed in a lot of phone booths. There you go. When you get drunk, you just, when you're young, you're like, no one, this is yeah. a place to pee. All right, I got I, I got so many peeves, I can't You gotta pick. save some. I'll save some. Well, but... yeah, hit me with another. All right, how about this guy? I met this kid, and he was like a young comic, and we were hanging out, and he was nervous. He was just he's just a anxiety-riddled... You're going to break so many young comics who listen to this hard. I'm not going to say He's done name. this before, where he's like, this comic from this weekend. It was Luke Bonet. No, no. <laughs> this guy, sweet kid. He's probably like 20 or 21, oh, okay. and he was just uh, kind of a keyed-up, squirrely kid. And he would do a thing that would drive me crazy, where he would say, huh, after every question, just to buy him some time. To think about it. So, like, ask me a question. Uh, how was England? Huh? Oh, England was good. England was good. He just needs a little more time, you know? But it, it was driving me crazy because I would go, how was England? And repeat it. And then now I'm repeating it. And then he's answering it. So now we're buttoned up against each other. So, like, ask me, like, three questions in a row. Um, where did you stay in England? Huh? Was, was, oh, I stayed at the Langham. The what? No, where the show was good? Huh? Where the show oh, is good? shows were great. Shows were great. He's killed the rhythm now. Yes, the rhythm is The ruined. rhythm's gone. Yeah, the rhythm's going to get you. And this guy was, <laughs> I couldn't get a, a conversation going. And then it, even if I tried, I didn't want to because it was so frustrating with the huh. Huh? What's her name who sings that again? Which one? Gloria Stefan. Yeah, dude, Tom McCaffrey. You know that joke? No. Great joke. He used to say, like, when people were like, that song changed my life. He's like, yeah, that never has happened, ever. <laughs> it's never like, I used to be, uh, I used to work in a deli, now I'm a Navy SEAL. All thanks to uh, Gloria Stefan's uh, rhythm is going to get you. I don't know that joke. I'm fucking up the algorithm here. Oh, shit. This, this, is, my, uh, this is my New Orleans this stuff. This is the song called Huh. That's right, Juvenile. Huh? huh? But he's saying it. He's every sentence ends in uh huh. Yeah. No wait, let me let me ask Mark another question. This is this is a woman in 2015. Do you have H pylori? Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I, I do. Thanks to you. That's what I wrote on the green room wall. Great club, badass. <laughs> eating butt, dude. You're reckless. Well, I just got out of like a 12 year relationship, and eating ass was like the new thing. So yeah. I was just like. I'm in. I'd put a, a napkin in my shirt. I'd bring a fork and a knife, and I'd go to town. Oh, yeah. Got to do it. Do you know who does that huh thing is Rich Voss. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> but, then he but then he comes back 
right after. He doesn't make you say the question again. He says, huh? And then he fucking jabs you. Yeah, he needs just one millisecond to, yeah. to zing you. You know what? Another big one is uh, when they go, uh, ask me a question, somebody. What was that? Like, uh, give me like a like a like a full. Sentence. Where are you from, Mark? Who me? <laughs> like, I said your fucking name, but they just need. I said minute. Mark. Yeah. yeah. What the hell? Who me? Who no, me? we're we're in a phone booth together. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to you. My dick's out. You talking to me? Huh? Yeah. Who me? <laughs> yes, yes, you. Yeah, that was the original taxi driver. You talking to me? Then he's looking in the mirror. Who me? <laughs> huh? Huh? Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. So yeah, that that drove me fucking crazy. And then just to be in a green room every weekend, and I started doing it to him. He'd go, uh, so uh, I go, so where are you from? And then he he'd go, huh? And I'd say, huh, at the same time. Ooh. And he didn't like that. Wow. Yeah, but I was I was just couldn't take it anymore. What uh, should we do? Some news? Hell yeah! Hell, please. What do we have do for the, the news? news? Beep, beep 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 beep. Cronkite. What do we have? All right, we have. Do you want to read them or you read them? All right. Are you lapelled? Yes. Okay, just checking. I didn't see a microphone. Dave LaPelle, let's go. <laughs> uh, urine trouble no more. Massachusetts Ooh. Bay Transportation Authority hopes with a new program to tackle public urination in the system's elevators with technology. Mm. The, B- what? the MBTA, which services Boston and the surrounding area, is launching a pilot program this summer in which urine detection sensors will be placed in four downtown elevators. Whoa. We're just talking about pissing in yeah. phone booths. Whoa. The sensor alerts the transit ambassadors. It's a, that's a bit lofty. <laughs> a guy with a broom. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a transit ambassador. Like you get your pick piss up, bucket. Yeah, you pick up urine, you fucking... What do you do for work? I'm an MTA diplomat. <laughs> right. I clean shit. Okay. <laughs> the transit ambassador will dispatch a cleaning crew. Wow. I, that's, I, that's a rough one. I'm glad this wasn't on my mattress as a child. I would have gone straight to prison. This, this is, is terrifying. Uh, what a weird use of technology. I know. You you can sense piss. Yeah. Yeah. We Jeez. we got I feel like our priorities are out of whack. Like we have hungry people, we have filthy water, we have all this shit going on and we're working on this. Well, I think it fucks up. I think it kills a I think it kills a elevator. Like you can it's not just the smell. It can like badly damage the Oh. Mm. I mean, the smell sucks. I think. What, I mean, if they what they really should do is have like a low yield shock that comes up you, the pissed into your penis. No. Like, just why not? I, you shouldn't yeah, be I, pissing in there in the first place. I don't place. think. I don't think that's okay. I don't. Th- I think that's way worse than pissing on the thing. Really? Getting a shock on your dick? How many times would you piss in an elevator after that? I know. Zero. I know, but. You're- <laughs> <laughs> what are we trying to curb? You're using violence on someone's dick. <laughs> yeah, what is this? All right, Lorena for? Bobbitt. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> yeah. Also, you're gonna be hooking up with a girl later. You're like, watch out for my dick. She's like, herpes. Like elevator. <laughs> I'm pissed. Well, also, like, can you imagine peeing in an elevator and an alarm goes off? Oh, that's fucking that's terrifying. Good. That scares. Yeah. You know what else wasn't wasn't a picnic was uh, back when you were a kid and they started putting that liquid shit in the water of a pool where when you pee it would turn green. You remember that? Yeah. It was some no, chemical. Not really. I think that was I think that was a wives' tale to get kids not to do it. Oh well, I was a big pool peer, and uh, well, who was ever changed color? Oh, you were too. Every kid does. All right. I mean, that's the thing. Whenever I see kids in a pool on the road, I'm like, fuck. Oh yeah, it's just a it's a toilet. Yeah, it's All a right. giant toilet. It is. It's. Uh, I mean. Uh, I definitely have peed on the street like a lot in my life, but Me it's also too. like you have to think if you're peeing in an elevator, like that's usually you're either piss drunk or it's like an only or last resort. Yeah, yeah. Right? Because like you're drunk, you're homeless, you can't find somewhere to pee. Yeah. I don't know. I I remember I got handcuffed. I used to do a bit about this. I got handcuffed by a cop once. I was shit faced, and he goes, "You were not seriously peeing on the street." And I said, "No, I'm doing it ironically." <laughs> <laughs> I got handcuffed, and he let me go, but. Yeah, I've gotten caught three times peeing in public. It's a bummer. But you know my street? I live on a little little weird kind of alley-type street, yeah. and everybody pisses on my street. You know, McDougal's <laughs> right there. It's like a party bar strip. Yeah. So I live a block off that, so my street is just piss central, and I can see them from my apartment. I'll like tap my lady, like, oh, got, got another one. You can't help it. You can't help watch. It's, I, well, it's like an alley, so you kind of, yeah. I, I, I walk down your block, and I'm like, I do have to go. Yeah, you see? It's, it's tough. A- it's, Electric shock. Yeah. All right. All I don't. Right. I'm not with the electric shock. I'm not. I don't think that's okay. Ah, How about pouring a glass of water on them? Pouring a glass of water. How about yeah. pouring a glass of piss on them? Yeah. Ooh. 
Ah, what's good for, for the goose eye. is good for the gander. All right. <laughs> okay, we got another one. <laughs> Never heard the expression used like that before. <laughs> Pour some pee on it. It's good for you. <laughs> it's a good move. So we have another one here. Yeah. Uh, in the wiggle of a nose, a man partially covered the bewitched statue in Salem with red paint. Oh. Witnesses called police around 5 p.m. Monday to report someone spray painting the bronze statue. Captain so and so says she got carried. Yeah. Look the at statue that. depicts Elizabeth Montgomery as lead character of Samantha Stevens from the 1960s sitcom Bewitched. Sitting on a broomstick and running. I did not know. So this is crazy that be, Bewitched in Salem. Well, that's funny. I think they knew what they were doing. That's a good. Yeah. Thing. No, I think they shot some of it in. Uh, Salem, but that's crazy. The Salem witch trials, right? Yeah. yeah, but then a guy is still upset about witches, apparently. Oh, uh, maybe I don't. Do you think he's there really mad one. about the show? I, I think he's I probably just saw a statue he wanted to vandalize. That'd be hilarious if he was like a he just hated old school TV. He's like, next we're gonna egg the Leave It to Beaver house. <laughs> uh yeah, I don't know. This is very strange. But half red. This is a this is very symbolic. Yeah. Something's up. Something's up. <laughs> it's also like Seems satanic. Well it's, well, it's it's satanic and also it's it's Salem. Like this yeah. is where yeah. wit witches were hung. Witches. Right. They weren't real witches, but they sure. were they were killed. Yeah. In uh and now it's like it's if they put a fucking Larry David statue in Auschwitz or something. <laughs> oh my God. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Good point. It's yeah. weird. That's true. You put it right in the heart of it. Interesting. All right, we got one more here. Boy, people are weird. People have too much time on their hands. This is from Charlotte, North Carolina. Federal authorities say a man has been arrested in Charlotte, North Carolina, after he was stopped in the city's airport with more than 23 pounds of cocaine concealed in seat cushions of a motorized wheelchair. Ooh, wheelchair. Back to Hawking. <laughs> Hawking's going quick today. Talk about a jazzy. Right. <laughs> this guy's a real rascal. <laughs> That's 23 pounds is a lot. That is a yeah. lot. So they, they ripped apart the, the wheelchair and they found... They better. I bet they were thrilled that there was cocaine in there because they were like, "Wow, that that must have been." If you rip apart someone's wheelchair, yeah. Was oh. he was he really uh, handicapped? No way. Oh, here it is. Whoa. Was he? Uh, was, do you thinking. think he was actually handicapped, or do you think it was just a a, a move? I think it was I, a move. I think it's a move. Because Whoa. and how did they find? Was it a dog sniff? Because you see a guy in that wheelchair, you're going to let him roll right by you. Also, I don't think that's an international airport. I'd be surprised if there were dog sniffers there. CLT, definitely an international. It is? Air oh, yeah. Charlotte's a, a huge one. airport. Yeah. Oh, it's a hub. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, is that the one with the rocking chairs? Uh, it's got the rocking chairs in there because they're like, we're Southern. I think so. I think it is. Charlotte, uh, by the way, the CLT, I always think of Clit when I book that. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't find the airport. <laughs> Oh, shit. This is a weird one. Yeah, so, what is going on with Bieber so here? The, I is have that a Bieber palsy? story here that's not this. Oh, here it is. Bieber's, uh, Justin Bieber said, oh, well, his face has been paralyzed. Whoa. And is canceling shows until he gets better. Half, half paralyzed. Excuse me, half paralyzed. It's, it's from the Ramsey something. Ramsey, Let's what's it called? Let's hear him tell it. Let me see. I can't mm -hmm. smile on this side of my face. Wait, pause it a sec. Yes. I think my ex-girlfriend had that on both sides of her face. Oh, can't <laughs> smile! <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. So there's full paralysis in this side of my face. Oh man! Justin Bieber gives a crazy, right? Update. Yeah. Well, he's super young to have this. this I think, what is it? What's it called? Ramsey something? What's it? Ramsey Hunt. Hunt. Dude, it, well, this usually hits people who are like over sixty at least. He's he's in his twenties, I think. Yeah, isn't he? yeah. Is it a stress thing, cocaine thing? No, it's, it's an ear virus that then fucks up what? your face. Yeah. Holy shit. So anyone could get it. If it's a virus, yeah. you can catch it. Yeah. H. by Lori. <laughs> also a virus. Wild. Yeah, but, but dude, that's like if that's like if like you got that and then it fucked your dick up. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like that's crazy that it's it so you get it goes in your ear and then fucks your face up. I mean that's crazy. And half and paralyzed. Is there a recovery process? I'm sure. I think it's yeah, I think you can recover, but it's I mean it's he canceled a tour. You know I mean I think about how much money we lose if we cancel a tour and then oh. think about what Justin Bieber just lost. Yeah. Multi multi million. Crazy. Crazy. That's Poor that's guy. terrible, yeah. I think he'll come out swinging. He's religious too. So what does that say about God? 
right. Where's your God now, Beebs? I guess you're not a believer. <laughs> okay, All we, right. we got some uh, hot Salem witch news. People give God More credit, Salem witch? Know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Three centuries after being convicted of hocus pocus. Nah. Uh, the last Good Salem movie. witch, in quotes, has been officially pardoned by the state of Massachusetts. Elizabeth Johnson Jr. found herself in hot water hey, forever, hey. in 1693 when Puritans caught up in the Salem witch craze came knocking on her door. At only 22 years old, Johnson, Jones, Johnson joined dozens of others, including her own mother, on the chopping block as a frenzy of folks declared them witches and sentenced them to death. Yeah, I mean well, that's I don't know about the apology. I mean, why do you have to do a pardon three centuries later? Like, clearly you weren't a part of this. I know yeah. it's such a, again a waste of time. I, it's all symbolic, I guess. It's you symbolic. Know? But That'd Amber Heard's if- next. <laughs> huh? You mean getting pardoned? No, no, getting burned. <laughs> I think that's already happened. Yeah, that's true. It's a witch Jeez. hunt, folks. <laughs> that's that's the modern day witch. Yeah, I think people get annoyed with their town or you know like back to germany they're all like super obsessed with feeling bad about the holocaust you can't make a holocaust joke you can't make a jew joke it's illegal to make a jew joke in germany so people just you get arrested bad. on stage if you do you that? get arrested oh, really? mean, in a bar you get arrested who's watching i think somebody could report you oh, can, well jews can make a jew joke i don't know i bet no one will laugh i think it's just too like oh shit the guilt I feel like that's the least. You could let us make jokes. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, great if they're like, these are, these, that you're on trial for making a Jew joke in Germany. How fucking ironic would that be? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? You get the gas chamber. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I was about to say, do Jews live in Germany? But then I realized, yeah, well, black people live here. Well, do Jews live in Germany? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was a dumb question, but just. Think it out loud. What? Uh, all right. I don't know if I'd want to live in Germany, or maybe you would, because then you'd be everybody would be really nice to you if you're Jewish. Yeah, it's probably just fine now. Probably yeah. fine. Oh yeah, should we? You want to? Do we have a camera on that, Matt? The bodega. I get, I get it. Whoa, baby. What's that? What's that you're holding, Mark? Oh, how do you like them apples, huh? Here's H. Pylori. Here we go, <laughs> Bodega Cat. It's here. Is this the unveiling of the name and everything? Oh, yeah. The whole kit and caboodle, the bottle, the label. It looks good, man. So what happened? Chris uh, brought you one in In Chicago. Chicago. Yeah, very exciting. He showed up. So Chris, who we're in business with for Bodega Cat, uh, not only did he bring Bodega Cat, he he brought uh, a Talisker 35-year-old bottle to my taping. Let's just say that did not make it through the first night. Wow. We killed that pretty quickly incredible peaty scotch and then i mean this is it's really great whiskey i can't wait for you to try it it's really you know i'm drinking it with people my agent you know she's drinking it and she goes i never have drank whiskey straight up that i I could handle this is so smooth and we'll crack it open no it's great we will crack it open we're gonna crack it open i just want to pour some in here right now pour some in all right i didn't know if i could yeah Woohoo! very exciting yeah, remember, I mean, for the folks at home, we tried, what, nine, ten, ten samples of rye, and this was the winner for sure. Yeah. Ah, that's fucking good. This is, by the way, the, our normal shit will be, uh, I think, 45%. This yep. is 50%. This Hell bottle, yeah. For some reason. I don't know why. I think it's like... Take a little pull off that, huh? 12 years sober down the drain. <laughs> Bodega Cat, we might be drunk. I was with Gary Veter, who doesn't normally drink, but for my special week, he was drinking every night. He's a fun drunk, too. He's a fun drunk, and he was he was another one who was like, this is fucking good, Bodega Cat. You know what? Bodega Cat's a great name for this. is because like when, when you're in a bodega and the cat shows up, you're fucking happy. You got mm. that right. There's something about that cat popping in where you're like, ah. Oh. Yes. You're never bummed to see a bodega cat. No, I always pet it. They sleep on the bread. They're adorable. And so they keep the mice out. People in Nebraska don't know what a, a bodega is or a bodega cat. It's like we- a little corner store. And then what is the bodega cat? I think they have bodegas job. all over the country. Yeah, it's a corn store, a convenience store, uh, usually run by a, a normal guy, not a corporation. And they always have a cat there because they kill the mice and they keep the store friendly. 
And and they're usually open late. That's kind yes. of the perk of the stores. You can pop in there in New York at least. You can pop in there at like midnight and get a get a hoagie. You got that right. Yeah, you get a little. You know, what's your late night chick like sandwich? What do you get? What's I go like? uh, turkey on a roll. Love it. Love it. Uh, lettuce, tomato, mayo, onion, salt, pepper, vinegar. Any pickle or no? I'll do pickle to have pickle, pickle and I'll there. do cheese. I'll fuck with a jalapeno too. Oh yeah. Cheers. Hey. hey, hey! This is it, gang. I never thought it'd be here. I, people on the road. When's the when's the whiskey? It's when's really whiskey? fucking good. I mean, it's really quality, Matt. You want to take a sip? Uh, I don't drink hard alcohol. I mean, but this is. I'll make an exception. Make an exception. <laughs> just a smooch. Just a smooch. take a kiss. Here. Yeah, you want to? Yeah, take some of Mark's right there. Just, 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 just kiss it. Just let it hit the lips. Give it a kiss. Just the tip, dude. <laughs> yeah. Just... just suck that fucking. Bo- Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, it smells good. <laughs> All right. It's like notes of caramel and vanilla, and yeah. it's like it really is. It's oh. really good. Yeah, I don't like that stuff, and that's good. All right. It doesn't have that burn that like I normally feel. That's I mean, really good. You can go through a bottle of this like like that. I mean, this is quality stuff. Bodega Cat. I'm fucking pumped for you guys to try this. It's so, it's coming so soon. I would say hopefully within the month we'll see. You know what really happens here with this, but uh, comedy clubs are gonna have it. Theaters. Uh, well, we'll we have, have to it. get through legal in certain uh, states. Yeah. Like there, we have to. I mean, some apparently New York's a real bitch to get through. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that fucking watch. Uh, we got to do something about that watch. Got to figure out the watch. <laughs> um, it's broken. I just watched the documentary on the guy who invented Rolex. Very fascinating. But yeah. Well, we'll get to that later. Dude, I, I just watched the back. Carlin doc part one and two. Oh! Oh, we got to talk about that. I mean, I, I don't know how long we're we're going. Yeah, here, yeah. But... No, we got to we got to we got to run bits soon too. Oh yeah. But uh, yeah, the, the Carlin doc was uh, was fucking amazing. It's what did inspiring. you like about it? I mean, look, it inspired me to be a, a better comic and a worse husband and father. <laughs> that uh, no, he was an incredible comic, and and that he was able to reinvent himself so many times. Like, yeah, that he became corny in the '80s to people. Like they're like, oh, this is he's mocked, and then he used that as fuel and came back stronger than ever. And like '90s Carlin's my favorite Carlin. I think. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah, probably me too. Because uh, he was he was finding himself and going hard, but also staying silly. Yeah, he was really awesome, uh, and also Carlin was not personal. He was very society this, society that, words this, words that. This like talked about his wife, his daughter, his upbringing, the whole thing. So that was fascinating. I didn't know he was kicked out of the. He was kicked out of school, high school, ninth college. grade dropout, ninth grade dropout. Really goes to show formal education is overrated. I mean, think about some of the smartest people you know. It's like Colin it's Quinn. It's not for free thinkers. No. I mean, it, it, look, I guess everything is what you make of it. But all I'm saying is if if you're a dropout, you could still be one of the smartest fucking people. It has no reflection on intelligence. Yeah. Know? Yeah. And just as a comedian and an artist or whatever you want to call it, he did everything first. Like, I see comics now doing shit. I'm like, Carlin did that 30 years ago, 25 years ago. That's how hip it still is. I know. I know. And there's a reason... The right wing, the left wing, they all post clips of Carlin because they're like, we like him. No, we like him, but it's just... You couldn't put him in a box. You couldn't put him in a box, exactly. He was just a comic, just yeah. making observations. Yeah, and- no, Carlin is... Uh, we got to get... I think we need... Some comics we need in this wall who we've lost. We got Geraldo, Norman, Saget. We got Rodney. We need Pryor, Carlin, Joan Rivers. Patrice. Patrice. Let's yeah. get some other... If you want to send stuff in, guys. Uh, we, how are we going to do that in the future, Matt? We'll figure it out. Can we yeah. give the address? Gotham Studios. Did you change it on Google? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, there you go. Give Google. Uh, give that a Google. Gotham Studios, New York. It's City. on uh, 30, 31 West Thirty Ninth. There yeah. you go. New York, Sixteenth New York. floor. Don't come by and visit us though. That would get we'll weird. We'll figure this floor. out. We might have to change huh? this. Did you just say the floor? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> if they get the building, they could. There's a guy with out. a gun out front. So we're ah, good. Those cycles don't, will go to Don't make floor. those jokes right now, Salamanca. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> All right, just me with a knife. One. I do have those. I do have those fears on stage sometimes. I'm like, am I going to die like Peter Finch in the end of Network? Is it, <laughs> am I going to be mid joke? Some dudes just show up with guns, like. <laughs> yeah, it could happen. What a way to go, though. I mean, shit. I always wonder, like, if Chappelle got stabbed, God forbid. Yeah. Would people drop the the hate? Or would they be like, mm. problematic comedian got stabbed? I think if anyone, if that headline 
formed people would fucking go nuts i think you can't that's true i mean anyone who's okay with violence in response to jokes is a piece of shit i agree and and dumb and they're not factoring in something could have hor- horrible could have happened oh the guy who went at him had Murderer. a fucking weapon and he got he's in jail for life you see that later no. they found out he tried to kill a guy I pull it up no, i think he got arrested i don't think he's in jail for life i didn't see that i think it's murder attempted yeah. murder Pull it up, but yeah. Uh, either way, Bodega Cat's coming. It's on the way. It's in, it's in the flesh right here. We can touch it. We can drink it. So it's just got to get through this legal good shit. Stuff. Yeah, but we're we're we just want you all to know this is this isn't a fucking game. No, this is coming. Hell yeah! Thanks, Chris. This is exciting. I remember when that we you know first we're talking about this and now it's like it's a thing it's i know crazy. it's crazy that it's like a thing you can touch <laughs> it's pretty wild and yeah. it's so daunting when you start it like what are we gonna do how are we gonna do a label how are we gonna try it how are we gonna taste it but just chip away slowly and we got there i think the guy's name is elijah white elijah uh-oh Mm-mm. oh boy Jeez. terrifying Looks like the Grinch. <laughs> oh my God! He does. Come on, he yeah. stole. Uh, he stole the Hollywood Bowl show. He stole comedy. Uh, he's, char- <laughs> he's charged with attempted murder. Thank you. Wow, you were right. Dude. I don't know if it's on Chappelle or other. No, another no. guy. Another guy. Oh, from some other, some guy. other guy. Who wrote yeah. that headline? <laughs> you. <laughs> I know, right? Nice and vague. It's like Mulaney's old joke. Is that the post sounds like somebody texted you the news? <laughs> Bozo in Queens hit lady or something. <laughs> Bozo is such a fucking underrated <laughs> word. Always do bozo. Bozo is such like an old New York type yeah. of word. Yeah, Trump would it. say bozo a lot. You bozo. Yeah. <laughs> Trump when he's doing shit like it is like a comic just trying to figure out a joke. Uh-huh. Except Trump is going for like cheers. Right. Yeah. You know right. what I mean? You yeah, just yeah. see him fishing. And he's like, oh, they're cheering. Like, I'll use that. That'll make the top forty-five. You know what I mean? That, that'll be the clip. Yeah. Exactly. Let me. Should we do bits before yeah, we get let's out of do here? Some bits. I mean, you, you. Who needs bits more than this guy? I'm fucking dying, bro. <laughs> Yeah, the well is dry. You got to start from scratch, baby. All right. All right, I got a couple ideas here. What do you got? Now, tell me if this has been done because it's it's starting to click on stage. It's it's uh, new and still clunky, but it's starting to feels like it's starting to get momentum. I still think it's weird that we slut shame in 2022. Like, you know, we're, we have all this progress. Have you done this one on the pod before? Have I done this? About Native Americans? Okay, no, never mind. Okay. Right. So I think the best time to be a promiscuous lady was Native American time, like Inca, Aztec, because they sacrificed virgins to the gods. Mm. So being promiscuous could save your life. You know, like uh, the chief comes up. He's like, hey, the crops are dying. We got to sacrifice a virgin. Are you a virgin? I'd be like, huge whore. Huge <laughs> whore. What are you kidding? I give the best arrowhead on this side of the wigwam. <laughs> I put the hoe in Navajo. And I just, I like that system better. They get rid of the boring gals and we keep Ooh. the fun ones. So now you got a, a chief, chief up on the volcano going, you should have fucked me. Whoa. Should have fucked So you're actually getting <laughs> penalized for being a virgin. And also, are they sacrificing male virgins ever? Because that, cause then you got the angle of the guy being like, but I've been trying. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, I'll use uh, that. I like that. The male yeah. virgin. Yeah. I don't think they care about male virgins. Yeah. And yet, the male virgins in this country are the ones uh, angry and killing people. They're the ones sacrificing people. Yeah, Ooh. exactly. Okay. Incels. Hiya, hiya. Hi, yeah, hi, yeah. All right, I'm getting too brave. <laughs> All right, I got an idea. All right, I'll, I'll, that's a good, that. good angle, good angle. Here's my idea. It's like, all right. So I think it's crazy that like you don't realize what like gambling was illegal almost everywhere in the country just a few years ago. And now every time you turn on the TV, it's like FanDuel, uh, yes. DraftKings, like it's just gambling nonstop. It makes you wonder what's going to be legal in five years. Like, are you going to be watching Monday Night Football? They go to break and it's like whores, 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 oh, you know, or like, great. you know, uh, we'll bring the cocaine. <laughs> and uh, yes. and there's some angle I think could be maybe with like uh, ages 17 and up because that's the that's the age of consent now. <laughs> right, right. Well, we did it with weed too. Yeah, weed, weed is illegal. another one. And now they're like a lot of. I think San Francisco just legalized drugs because of all the heroin use. But uh, that's good. That's good. What will be legal? 
you know, one guy, I like the guy who's like, come on, incest. <laughs> you know? He's just sitting like, we got gambling, we got weed. Come well, on, they, pedophilia. They, they start weed in like Portland. Maybe they start uh, incest in like Kentucky or yes, something. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. I don't know. You're gambling on having a fucked up kid. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's so true. Like thing, we even did with gay marriage. I remember Obama being like, "Gay marriage is is immoral" or whatever the hell. And I remember even thinking then, as a younger guy, like that's not gonna last. Well, some people they'll go to the Supreme Court or you know they'll they'll testify before Congress or something where they'll say you know like we need to legalize weed. You'll get someone, but then no one's gonna do that with incest. No one's gonna show up like guys. Come on, like this <laughs> right. is. It's not a cool thing to push. Yeah. Th- look at my sister. Come on, man. <laughs> like, Cheech and Chong want to be the face of weed. No one wants to be the face of incest. <laughs> you know? Yes, yes. That's a bad face. <laughs> We've all seen that kid. He's uh, not looking good. But yeah, there's, there's a lot here. There's something here. You can right. just make a list of all the il- things that are still illegal and just plug those into commercials. Yeah. All right. Yeah, weed. We're playing, guys. Mm-hmm. We got I, I mean, need I need a new act. <laughs> scratch offs were always legal, which I never got because I'm like, isn't that gambling? Yeah, what the hell? Yeah. Is it because it's so cheap? Hold on, it's got something. Where I was when I was a kid, river boats were big. You weren't allowed to gamble, but you could have a gambling on a incest cruises. <laughs> okay, go on the boat. Yeah, I fucked my cousin, but it was on it was on the water. <laughs> I All see. Right. <laughs> incest cruise i'm telling you i'm gonna start that myself that's a million dollar idea no but i think yeah i think uh mom i booked a cruise yeah <laughs> give me a minute right you know people go on uh vacate like bachelor parties in vegas bachelor party at the family reunion oh, all right oh my God. I'm, I'm hung up on the incest thing i got a hot, I have a hot cousin <laughs> Uh, should we, we should say, guys, we have all these cool glasses on We Might Be Drunk. Uh, is it we might be drunk pod.com? Yeah, we might be drunk pod.com. The Patreon is patreon.com uh, slash we might be drunk pod. Uh, we're Sentence growing. Questions. A lot beads. of big guests coming up. Yeah, Mark, where are you going to be on the road, bro? I'm all over. I don't know when this comes out. Sunday, right? Oh, this is okay. Yeah. Well, uh, this weekend coming up, I mean, I'm in Irvine, California, at the Irvine Improv. Come on out. Say hi. Uh, I rarely get out to L.A. to do a full weekend, so this will be a banger. And I'm, I'm doing the fully loaded tour with Bert. He asked me to plug that because that's like baseball stadiums and uh, racetracks, so that's going to be a lot of tickets. And uh, MarkNormanComedy.com, uh, Irvine Improv, The Vogel in Red Bank, New Jersey. We just added a show. Wise Guys, Salt Lake City, Houston Classic. Improv, yeah. San Antonio, LOL. Uh, Comedy Off Broadway in Lexington, Richmond, Funny Bone, West Palm Beach, uh, all kinds of good stuff. Boston, uh, Portland, Seattle, Brea, you name it. So uh, praise we're, Allah. We're going everywhere. We got uh, Cleveland, Ohio, Houston, Texas, uh, West Palm Beach, Buffalo, San Jose, uh, Pittsburgh, uh, Dania Beach, so many more coming. Uh, you know, I'll be in LA, Irvine, all that shit soon too. I'll be in uh, all over the country. So samuel.com slash shows. Love it. Building a new act. It's yes. Gonna, it's going to be awesome. That's what I was going to say. If you're a real comedy fan and you want to see a, guy, a real comedian working on a new act, this is a cool thing to see. It's a really positive spin on it. I'm trying. <laughs> Go see this guy bomb all over the <laughs> all over the country. Uh, no, great to see you guys again. Missed you all. This yeah, is fantastic. Great and, new uh, studio. Great Mango's new studio. studio. Huge out. guests are coming. You're Big gonna love guests. the huge guests. We got great comics. We uh, got Carlin coming in. And That's pretty wild. You already have watched it, but our boy Stav, uh, Stavi baby, Stavros Halki is his new special is crushing. Crushing. It's a great special. It's Give hilarious. it a watch. We love you guys. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Bodega. Sunday's the day for my nap.